fine operators while saving time, cost, and environment. There's 11 million kilometers of power lines in Europe. That's about uh, 13 times to the moon and back. 97% of those power lines are still today in the era of smart grid observed by men on foot. Those other 3% are observed by complex and expensive helicopter inspection. Drones are also popular, but current state-of-the-art drones are inter intermediate stage because uh, drones are still not efficient enough to cover large-scale areas such as thousands of kilometers of power lines. In addition, there's uh, at least six to 10 engineers and three different softwares involved in an average airborne inspection project. Uh, so basically there's a lack of uh, automation in the whole process and there's, uh, uh, and there's uh, too many, uh, or, yeah, okay, so uh, this is, uh, Hepta Airborne has developed an autonomous aerial system which has the ability to collect up to 600 kilometers of uh, data in a single flight. In other words, our system stays in the air for six hours. We support that with machine vision and AI sensors, which means that the sensors and the drones know by themselves what they have to inspect. And currently we are developing a post-processing and analysis platform in order to automate the software side. So when we finalize our developments, uh, we will uh, turn uh, complex airborne inspections into an automated turnkey technology package. Uh, we will replace six to ten engineers with one and uh, we will be cheaper than on-foot analysis. So in our early stage, uh, our current stage, we are serving our clients uh, with the service model uh, to grow the market demand, show the proof of concept and the willingness to pay and of course to receive the key information necessary into our development stage. Uh, so in three years time, we will uh, we, we will make a turn point from a service provider to a technology license and, uh, um, and software provider. So basically, we will use uh, hardware as a way in, but the actual plan is big data and AI. And this is also where we, uh, we are different uh, comparing to our competitors uh, when we, uh, we are approaching into this big picture uh, with the right order of developments. So behind all of this, there's four co-founders, three of the... Three of the co-founders are aviation-related engineers with an aviation background, having built the manned aircraft, uh, helicopters, uh, uh, unmanned aerial systems, uh, sensors and software. And uh, I'm the fourth one, I'm the power engineer, and I also have a successful energy sector consultancy company with uh, 20 people in the team. So uh, fortunately for a small team uh, of Hepta Airborne, we have also our uh, support entities and uh, supporters. We belong to different uh, incubators, so in a short amount of time we have received um, or, or uh, gained a great amount of or volume of uh, business contacts in EU and we are uh, advised by three mentors covering aviation, drones, robotics, business operations. But what I would like to uh, uh, phrase uh, the most is that definitely our biggest uh, supporters are our clients. Uh, because uh, in our first four months of uh, active or, or aggressive sales, we have, uh, we have made commercial agreements for around 1.4 million euros. And um, I pretty much say that we have uh, locked in the local Estonian market because in the first uh, or the following next three years, uh, we have to cover 99% uh, of the local uh, of the grid in the country. Uh, we have already uh, received high interest from uh, Nordics and from uh, different countries. So in order to scale up and uh, move fast, we are looking for a seed investment of 300k. So in short, that's about it. Thank you for listening. And uh, yeah, my name is Henrik Lemmer, and I look forward to your questions. <coughs> Are you 100% dedicated to HEPTA or are you working 50-50? No, no. Uh, well, uh, let's say uh, as an example, last month uh, I had like 350 working hours and 30 of those hours were uh, for, uh, for the consultancy company. But it, this uh, increase, uh, decreases in time, uh, but at this point this consultancy company is the first key which the, we have the same clients. Uh, we have uh, the clients as agreed operators, and we have partners as uh, consultancy companies who work for the grid operators. So basically this uh, grid com uh, this consultancy company 
uh, boosts up our sales at the early stage. And we use the existing contacts of this uh, and also the references to get behind the, uh, to get behind the client stores. Maybe very shortly. Yeah, so yeah. Today, uh, how it works? So I'm a customer interested in having this kind of information. What happens now? Uh, well basically, basically, we uh, inspect, uh, at this point we have like, uh, for the next three years we have to inspect 60,000 kilometers of power lines, uh, our commercial agreements. And uh, what we do is we fly, uh, we, uh, fly by the whole, all the, the, basically the whole grid is uh, flown over uh, with different sensors. We monitor and inspect and gather the data and then we start processing it. At this point we, are, we can already provide service uh, with our prototypes and we are already effective uh, and we have a competitive advantage, but the key here is basically to automate the whole process. And the next big thing is the big data, as I mentioned, because with an exponential growth in the following uh, years, uh, the, the drone uh, and the data collection will, uh, will increase the volume of the data. Uh, as just one example, in our last project we did with manned helicopters, we inspected thousands of kilometers, 1,000 kilometers of uh, power lines and 20 terabytes of raw data was gathered. So this is something which uh, most of the uh, competitors are still also not thinking about uh, because uh, and this is why we are focusing on the AI and uh, trying to make uh, the most of uh, automating the software because when we basically can replace everything with the drones then at some point we will have an exponential, uh, exponential explosion of the volume of the data. Some, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there's definitely there's high quality images. There's, uh, there's sensor related data uh, such as like this. This is a uh, LiDAR data. It's a uh, 3D point cloud. Uh, it's like uh, per one square meter, there's like hundreds of points, points and, uh, and they, they uh, combine a, a ge geometrical uh, terrain corridor and you can, be, uh, you can analyze different stuff from there. And then there's, uh, there's like uh, sound, you can, you can, and there's thermal images there's different kinds of sensors which can be used. Yeah. How do you monetize this data? Like it, it sounds really cool, but yeah. I, I cannot figure out how to monetize this data. Monetize? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we, uh, we provide the client, we don't provide the client with this uh, 20 terabytes of raw data. We only provide them with uh, necessary end information, which is basically today it's. Uh, dependable on the client. If they have a necessary software already, then we can add layers to their software. Uh, and of course, all kinds of just Excel kind of uh, information which, which will be inserted into their software. Basically, it's the end key information. So as an example, this uh, where the last example was brought for thousands of uh, 1,000 kilometers and 20 terabytes of raw data, we gave to the client like two gigabytes. And just the end data, info, uh, necessary information where they could plan the reconstruction of power lines, the electric safety, and, yeah, and everything else. Just one, one like, important thing is you said you have 1.4 million euros covered by agreements. Yeah. yeah. So these are like signed agreements. Yeah. yeah. And what, what's the margin on these agreements? That's uh, what for three years. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, uh, we hope to receive around maybe 20% at this point, but, uh, but this is also, these, these uh, are one of uh, the first projects. Which we have been only on the market for four months. So, basically, so there's still a lot of manual work and still a lot of learning and we are still uh, doing, just to get the statistics, we are uh, wasting more money for the project at, in the first months to gather the more necessary data to our developments. So this will definitely increase our cost. A year from now, if you have done this manual stuff, if you have the same contract, one to four million or yeah. Yeah. what would it then yield for you? Yeah, it, will it will be definitely at least 60% uh, uh, yeah. in a matter, matter of course. Yeah. So, but then, then all in all, you are in a data selling business. For any customer, it doesn't matter that you use throws. No. No. There's no, no value no. not so there. Uh, exactly. It, no, exactly. This is the uh, we use the hardware as a way in, but actually the end information that this will be the future of the drones. Definitely, the, the drones will be uh, will have the highest necessity in gathering the data. But uh, today, there's still lack of efficient data collection possibilities for large infrastructures. But uh, so so we have developed the drone, 
which, uh, which isn't on the market yet and uh, which we can access to the market. But uh, at the same time, our goal is still we see the biggest necessity also in handling the big data and the, and the AI side, the sensor side. The data that uh, will be gathered from the drone will uh, already be filtered out. You won't be gathering 20 terabytes of raw data. Okay. This, Thank yeah. you very much. Ah, okay. Your, your time is up. Thank you.